What is up, ice fishing freaks? Luke Reeser here from Two Fat Town Outdoors. Welcome back to an all-new episode, an ice fishing episode. Oh, so excited to say that. Anyway, so this will be my third ice fishing video of the year, and my third ice fishing trip of the year, even. And I'm really, really excited for today. Um, I am back out here at the the lake where we made our first ice fishing video, me and Brad. And if you have not watched that yet, I'll link it in the description below. But I have a little something special to show you today. I just picked this up last night. I had a, a custom rod built, a long rod. And I'm very, very excited to use it. I'll explain it a little more as when we get out into the ice, but it is a definite tool you have to have if you're fishing the backwaters of the Mississippi River or any shallow water, anything 10 feet or under. 10 feet's probably stretching it, I think, for me, but you're fishing shallow water, you gotta have one of these. Can't wait to get out there and use it. Stay tuned, folks. Donkey hunting starts right now. All right, folks, I got the long rod here. I freaking love this color. This is amazing. Thank you so much to my buddy Dan for making this for me. This is a custom six foot line through ice rod made by Shocker Ice Rods in Wisconsin. Made by one guy in his shop, handmade, completely handmade, assembled with quality top of the line parts. Anyways, if you have never used one of these, you don't reel the fish in with a reel. You pull straight up out of the hole. That's what makes it so handy for hole hopping in shallow water. But anyways, first thing you do is pull this little reel handle out, loosen it up. And pull some line out. It's got an awesome little reel uh, bait keeper there. I got the little three millimeter Schnozberry jig, so I'm gonna start with and you just pull line out, just like so. However much line you need. I don't know how much I need yet until I start fishing, but I'm assuming that's probably gonna be plenty right there. So I'm gonna tighten this down, fold this handle back in, Got my jig here, pull out my puck, grab me a waxy, Luge them a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to see if this is enough line. So I'm going to come over here and drop her down in the hole. Plenty of line, I might have too much out. But see, the big advantage of this is you can stay back away from the hole so there's no shadow. And you can stand up. With the, with the tickle sticks, you pretty much gotta sit down. I mean, you can stand up and fish, but it's kinda awkward with that short rod. I've missed a lot of bites doing that. But it's so handy for fish in shallow water because like right here I got I got six feet of water. So the line I got out, right now I'm on the bottom. See and I got my rod about about a foot and a half off the ice. Now I can raise up, just raise my arm up right here 
and I'm right at the about one foot under the ice. No reel. I can just lift and lift and set. So handy, especially for fishing crappies, because you don't know at what depth them crappies are in the water column. They suspend so much. There we go. <laughs> Not a big fish. Tiny little bass. But how cute is that? I gotta send a picture of that to Dan. So I felt that pretty good all the way back. That little fish, he dumped her pretty good. So if the bites are gonna be like that, oh my gosh, you can really feel them. Well, I've established that I'm getting bit more at 10 feet. I started in about six. And I couldn't mark any fish. And I moved to about 11 feet and I couldn't mark any fish, but every hole that I've been in about 10 feet, I've caught fish or got a bite in. There's another one. That one feels good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that one is digging. Yep. That would be a keeper. Bam, you betcha. Finally, finally a decent one on the, on the new rod here. Probably an eight incher, if I had to guess. There we go. Tangled up. <clears throat> All right. See what you are. I don't think you're a keeper. Pretty close. Wax worms. Yep. yep. Nice little fish. Oh, dum to doo dum. So, anyways. Starting to catch some, get some bites. Lost a good one. Uh, I found some fish out here in about 10 feet of water. So it's a good dude, just gotta move around, stay mobile. I started in there, like I said, six feet. I'm gonna come out here and drill some more holes around where I caught that big one. See if we can make her happen. There's a couple holes here. That big eight inch I can fish out of. There we go. Feels better. Oh. Oh. Good fish. Good fish. Stay pinned, buddy. Oh. Yes. Yes. That is a frickin' donk. That is a frickin' monster. Oh, oh, oh. oh man. That one's gonna be pretty close to monster size.
Yes. All right, folks. Well, I was a little worried that you wouldn't be able to feel the bites very well. And I know that spring bobber, that's what it's for, is to watch it. But I still like to feel the bites, especially when you're watching your Vexlar and trying to watch your rod tip. And I am very, very impressed in the sensitivity of this rod. You can feel it all the way down to the end of the rod. And fighting a fish on this thing is unreal. I mean, they freaking are pulling those big gills. That one I just caught is a freaking slab. But, oh, it's fun. You gotta get you one of these. There we go. Feels decent. Mm, pumpkin. Little pumpkin. Beautiful little fish. All right, I forgot I had the gaff in here with a ruler on it, but the smallest measurement is 10 inches. I don't think this bluegill's gonna go 10. But, oh, he does. Look at that. Right exactly 10 inches. Freaking awesome. There we go. Oh, a little bigger, but not super big. Probably seven and a half. I think I'll keep him just to eat that. So I have something to eat with that other one. Pretty slow right now. There we go. The old big hole. There we go. That feels a little better. Oh yeah, crappie. Not a huge one, but decent. Biggest crappie I've caught this year. Heck yeah. You bet. Changed my mind. I'm just gonna keep them and limit out since I'm only gonna eat nine. A big one I'm gonna wrap up, get him up on the wall. I'm gonna put him in my freezer for the rest of the winter. Hopefully get a couple more. His size or a big crappie or perch or something to go with him. Make a good uh, cool ice fishing mount. Got to have something to remember 2020 by. There's a lot of things in this year I don't want to remember, so. Look for something good.
There he is. He's digging a little bit. Yeah. He does not want to come up, does he? Yeah, nice crappie. Another crappie. I'll take you any day of the freaking week. You guys know how much I like crappies and how not often I catch them. You know, not a huge one, but he'll eat. It's seven. So this is the hole I caught the first crappie on. Both crappies have come in these back holes. Same depth, but just closer to the main lake. There is one. Little crop. Little crop, little crop, where are you? Three more of your grandparents and I'm out of here. Oops. There we go. Feels like a bass. Number eight. Come on, two more. This is kind of slow bite, but they're eating the frostbite jig today. Frickin' schnozberries. That's a wrap, folks. Off the ice. I was a little worried coming off because since I was out there at 7 o'clock this morning and it is now 10 to 12, there's about that much, about an inch of water on top of the ice, which means she shed close to an inch of ice today and there's not a lot of ice out there. There's about three and a half to four when I started. In some of my holes, I was only seeing about two inches of ice, but it was, it was strong and I never felt nervous out there except for this last 50 yards. She's cracking underneath me quite a bit. But anyways, yeah, this is the best day I've had out here this year. Um, i going home with eight keepers. Caught some crappies today. That was a plus. Caught a few bass. And I got my first 10-inch bluegill of the year, so I'm freaking jacked up about that. It's a freaking hog. Can't believe I caught it. It's been, I don't think I got any 10s last year. Got a lot of 9s, nine, 9.5s. Nine but yeah, I was very excited to get that. I cannot tell you enough how freaking impressed I am with this rod. Shocker ice rods, baby. That's where it's at for shallow water fishing. I love my tickle sticks, but for this kind of shallow water stuff, you cannot go wrong with this. I can't believe how sensitive it is and how much you can feel and just being able to just pull the fish right out of the hole. And it's kind of nice to stand up the whole time today. I'm used to sitting down in the bucket, but I was standing up the whole time. My back don't hurt. And uh, just the pulsation of this rod it bends it's six footer and it's long you don't even really have to work your jig just hold it and you can't hold it still it's like physically impossible it's physics it's science so no matter what your jig is moving and then you add a little pop into it and she's really going and i think that's why i triggered some of them bigger bites today but i love it with the wind grips it's freaking awesome so you can't find these online dan does it all out of his shed so if you want one like this, it's freaking sweet. He's got four of them made up, they're gray. So where, where this is green is gray, and then black, and then a gray blank. They're freaking awesome. You, if you're in the market for this type of rod, get a hold of me, because Dan has them four gray and black ones that are ready to go, first come, first serve. They're not gonna stick around long. They're freaking awesome. Ice is here, get one.
If you have not yet subscribed to Too Fat to Hunt Outdoors, go ahead and do that right now. Hit the bell so you get notified every time we put out a new video. Destroy the thumbs up button, Luke Reeser signing off. Always remember, you're never too fat to fish.